up y'all welcome back to our channel back with another video and with a guest star Hi. introduce yourself who are you what's your name where are you from all that good stuff gotcha so my name is frank i'm from los angeles california i am a rising 3 -0 at columbia law school Um, so Frank is on Law Review. This video is going to be all about Law Review. We're going to answer all the questions y'all have asked us. Me and Sam are not on Law Review, so we have to, you know, get someone <laughs> that, has the that has that personal experience. Yeah. So yeah. People ask about it all the time. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess to start, what made you want to even get on? Yeah, I think there's like a prestige factor to Law Review, so everyone's heard about it. And then at Columbia, like everyone does it. Um, and so I think oftentimes in law school you kind of get caught up in this like well everyone's doing it so i'm going to do it so that was part of it um but i actually have like a really close mentor who was on law review and he like sort of encouraged me to do it and so i was like i guess i'll do it it's not like that hard of a, a task to do um okay. so I just kind of, you know like oh, you know it was just like <laughs> you had just finished finals and you're still kind of like in study mode so if you kept in that mode it was like yeah just do this as well was it worth it oh uh, I, I think so. I think um, you learn a lot and you learn sort of like to familiarize yourself with the law in a, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. um, that I think you can probably get in a lot of other places, but like you definitely get in law review. So even if you're just reading a, a, like an article and editing that article, you're learning about the topic in that article. So you can speak okay. semi-intelligently about that. Every time you see something, you're looking for like edits and grammar and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it helps in that way because like when you go to a firm or when you go to work at, you know, anywhere, like having that attention to detail is definitely going to be something that they're looking for you to do. So I think it helps in that way. You briefly talked about the time frame for the process. Yeah. I guess because like a lot of people have no idea what it is. Right. You want to talk a little bit about like what you actually have to do? Yeah. So it, it, what law review is just like, what is this? Right, right, right. So law review is essentially a publication. So we publish books, right? So at, at the very core, it's like a book publishing sort of situation. And if you're an editor on the law review, you sort of help edit the sites, you help edit the grammar, you help edit the style of the things that are being published in those particular books. Um, and so it's pretty rigorous because you have a lot of like great authors and great professors who sort of submit their work and you kind of give them feedback and help them with submitting it. And so it's cool in that regard because once again, you're sort of at the core of legal scholarship and that's fun. And then as an editor, you mostly just do like site check and, and like editing <laughs> and that's fun and it's fine. Um, and so a lot of schools do it very differently in terms of like how you get on law review or how you qualify for law review. So some schools, unfortunately, like you have to be in the top whatever percentage to apply to law review. Other schools you oh, can apply? Right, yeah. So it's like, so that's why there's like this myth that like you have to have like the best grades in order to even qualify for law review. And I think that that's something that happened kind of in the past. Um, and so now the application, especially at Columbia, is a lot more holistic. So in addition to them looking at your grades, they look at a personal statement that you write, they look at your resume I think you submit, and then you also do what's called the write-on exercise. And the write-on exercise is essentially their way of seeing how well you write and how well you pay attention to detail. So in the exercise, you have a citation exercise, and there's 10 citations that you have to do, and they're based on like the craziest things. So like, like they'll give you like a tweet, and you have to like cite to the tweet, and you have to figure out how to cite to a tweet. And so you look at the book that they give you, and you figure out, oh, when you're citing to a tweet on this date, you use this, and you use the last name first, and you use the comma, and then you use this. Every single letter or every single thing has to be scrutinized. So like your period is not at the end, or if it comes before your like closing bracket, really like then it's wrong. And so that's one of the the things that you have to do with your write on the citation citation exercise, and then you have sort of like a memo that you write. And so they give you a fact pattern that's like based on whatever. So ours was like, like Gossip Girl themed. Um, and so it was like- Have you watched Gossip Girl? I watched a couple episodes, so I was like kind of familiar. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. It's like it'll like get so. me through it. <laughs> yeah, but basically like Serena had like lived a new life, become a teacher, but her past life had come up. And so it was like a, whether or not someone could like put that information out there in her new life. It was like, I think it was like a, like what you can put on the internet or something like that. The issues vary, so that doesn't really matter, but like they give you an issue, they give you the laws on that issue, and they basically wanna see how well you write a memo and how well you can sort of synthesize the facts and the law that you're given. Um, and so it's really helpful to like pay attention in your legal writing classes, because if you can write theoretically, you can help someone else write and help them edit their work and pay attention to detail once again. Um, and so I think that's what it comes down to. But at the end of the day, your finished work product for law review is literally the memo, the citation exercise, and like your personal statement and that's okay. kind of like it and so they like sort of make this decision based on um all of that like, how long did it take you to do all that 
So at Columbia, and it's different at other schools, so I don't want to sort of like give anybody the wrong information, but at Columbia, I think you get like 10 days from the last final. So no one is allowed to do law review or apply to law review until after your finals are done. And then you have 10 days, and it's theoretically not supposed to take you 10 days. It's supposed to take, I don't know how many days it's supposed to take you, but it's supposed to take you 10. How long did it take you? It took me like, I waited till the last five. minute. I, no, I waited till the very <laughs> last minute. Last minute. Five. Five. No, like I actually waited till the very last minute, and I took like three days. But I would not recommend that uh, because I didn't realize how hard it was, and so like I actually like read the whole packet and then left it, went home, hung out, came back to school, and then I called a friend of mine who's also applying, and I was like, "Yo, this is like very extensive." He's like, "Yeah, have you started?" I'm like, "No, I haven't started." He's like, "You need to start like right now." So I literally went to the library on like a Thursday and just did the citation exercise, which I thought was kind of fun. So it was, it's, I'm kind of like nerdy in that sense, but it's like, it was like, it was like, it was like a treasure hunt. It was like, okay, now I gotta figure out how to like make this happen and make this happen. So I don't know. Kind so of are fun. you litigation folks? I was about to ask yeah. the same thing. Okay. Yeah. God has so. to be, have to be. Treasure hunt. Yeah. yeah. So what like, what was it like? You know, like, like, you, like, like make friends? Time. Yeah, it's interesting. Time. It's it's very so there are, and you sort of get out of law review what you want to put into it. So law review, I think the one thing that you get that you sort of can't deny as we enter these spaces of like higher education is like the network, right? And so law review opens a new network for you. So like you get really good outlines because people who are in law review typically do really well in school. So like you have those outlines. You get access to the alumni, so those who typically have done well are typically in really good jobs and you have their information and they come back for events. So at, at, for me, one of the biggest things is sort of opening this new network and talking to folks that I want to talk to at like a firm that I may not have had at any other in at. I think I found my community pretty early in Balsa. Sam knows that we were on board together, um, like from like the first few weeks of Columbia. So for me, I was very much already rooted in the community. Um, and so some of the folks from Balsa were on law review with me, but I'm not sure I took the community as Aspect out of it as much as others did. And I think not because it wasn't there, but more so because I felt like I had, had already yeah, had that. Yeah, you um, um, but I think it, it's, it's there for Plus. folks who want that. And some people are like really into it and like they hang out and spend a lot of time in our law review building and they just like kind of like really, that's like a really a big part of their life. So mm -hmm. I think it's what you make of it. Um, and then the time commitment itself is quite a bit. Um, and once again, this will vary by school, right? So Columbia puts out a lot of books, which means we have a lot of work to do with those books. Um, and so we have typically two to three assignments per week and each assignment is supposed to take eight to 10 hours, I wanna say. No, five to eight hours. I wanna say it's five to eight hours. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can take you five hours, sometimes it can take you eight hours, and you just don't really know, so you kinda of have to budget that time. Sometimes you'll have a very difficult piece that's like very rough, and a professor will sort of just want to meet their deadline, so they'll send it over, but they know it's not their best work, you know it's not their best work, and so you're finding yourself spending a lot of time editing their above the line sentences, finding sources for them, making sure that their sources actually make sense, because the way that law review works is I need to be able to find the exact source that needs to say exactly what you're saying. So if you say go to page six, on page six it has to say this. So a lot of times I'm going to page six and making sure that it says this. But sometimes a professor would be like, it's in this book. So you like read the book? You don't read the book. And, and they're very, very, um, it's, it's cool because the way it's set up is like no one's only reading it once. Right, okay. so like it's set up so that like at least like 10 different eyes are on the paper at one time. Okay. And that helps with like mistakes and objectivity and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, it, it's sometimes you get to a point where you're just like, I have to like, I'll skim the book. The cool thing is if the book's online, you just do like a control F and try mm -hmm. to find like a, a, like, oh, this this word was mentioned. I'm trying to find that word. Um, and it's usually not that bad, but sometimes you sort of get that in those assignments take a little bit longer. It was interesting sort of balancing all of that, but I think the fact that I made it and like did it is like helpful in like 3L because I'm gonna be chilling. I'm gonna go to Amsterdam next semester. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be great. I'm gonna be great. I'm, yeah, so I'll be studying abroad like you guys did, I'm having a great time. Um, and so it's kind of, but I know that like when I start working or whatever, I'm like, I was on Boston board, I did law review, I did all of these things, I was in a clinic, and I still was able to manage my time well. Being able to, um, being able to have done that and saying that you've done it. Um, if you ever go to work or you get stressed, you kind of know, like, I've been in a worse situation or I've done more and I know that I can do that, so. That's so fair. I guess just to take a few steps back, I had a question as far as, like, the network that you spoke about. Yeah. You spoke, like, at Columbia. I'm wondering beyond that. Yeah. Like, maybe if you did EIP or have interviewed in any other sense since being all of you, is it something that always comes up? It comes up, but also like for me, like if I'm doing something and I'm working hard for it, I'm going to bring it up anyway. So, so like, they don't bring it up. They don't bring it up. I'm going to bring it up. And okay, the interesting okay. part about like right, right, that's right. And it's funny because apparently when I was uh, like an admitted student, 
somebody was on law review, but they said that that was like the last thing that they said. And I was like, I feel like they were nonchalantly mentioning they were on law review. And then I said, if I was on law review, I would shout it from the rooftops. And I was giving a tour and that person that was in my tour was like, are you shouting from the rooftop that you're on law review because you said you were gonna do that? And I'm like, not here, but like with jobs, like you have to sell yourself. And for me, it's kind of like, I'll do it in like a very subtle way. So I'll say like, yeah, no, things have been great. I stopped working last week and then I started law review orientation. And so that's been going well. When you're of color in these types of situations, you want to put yourself in the most indisputable position possible, right? So like if I have on paper that I'm on Columbia Law Review and that's something that you see as prestigious, or you can't really come at me for that, right? Like you can have your qualms about Boston, you can think what you want about whatever, but like there are certain things that you sort of can't, not even Boston, because Boston at Columbia is like very much respected. So if you have Boston there too, you'll be good. But it's like there are certain things that I don't have to talk out that that sort of represents me and it precedes me before I even get there. So I think that that's like helpful to have if you're willing to do that. Um, so that was another reason I got it. Cause it's like the same way we have JD next to our name and nobody can like check that. Mm -hmm. um, well, having Laura review next to your name is one of those things too, it feels like. Based on your experience, would you have stayed like or tried to get a board position if you weren't studying abroad? <laughs> um, <laughs> probably not. So for me, like, I don't take pleasure in legal scholarship in the sense of, like, it's interesting, it's fun to read, but, like, it's not a priority of mine, right? I feel like the way that I've interacted with the law has been a lot more practical. So, like, I got a feedback on my note that it sounded too much like a brief. And so like, I'm used to writing briefs. Like this is the law, this is how it should be interpreted. This is how it's interpreted in the second circuit and the fourth circuit, and this is how we're gonna do it here. Versus like a note or versus like legal scholarship, which sometimes can be a bit more abstract and a bit more sort of like higher level, what about this possibility, that sort of thing. I think that it's important for people who are interested in that to do that because you are literally picking the legal scholarship of the future. But the assignments last up until graduation? I don't think it lasts up until graduation. I think it ends at spring break. Okay. okay. So like my last assignment as a two, I was during spring break. So okay. that was like cool. Or right before spring break. So after that, I was chilling. Sure. Um, but the first semester is like very difficult. It's, like, okay. it's kind of crazy. And okay. then you can either have two or three assignments. So like a two assignment week is like a great week. It's like vacation. And then you have three assignment weeks. It's like, okay, this is a lot. And then if you have multiple three assignment weeks, it gets a little crazy, but it's literally just so that we can get the books out on time and make sure that they are very much like in Columbia Law Review style. Yeah. But it's sometimes like those three weeks will get you because it's like that's theoretically 24 hours of the week that you have to set aside. Theoretically, they can take eight hours. Sometimes they don't, but that's some, like, so even thinking about carving out 24 hours in a week just sounds kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you kind of get caught up in that, but you get it done, it's done. It's you did it, so, right, and yeah. you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. so we'll see, we'll see. I have more practical questions. So yeah. how many people are actually on Law Review from each year? And how many I, editors are there and stuff? I wanna say there are, I wanna say 45, like in my class, and then 45, and I think it's like 45 is the number of people. And then there's like the editor in chief, and then there's, like there's an executive notes editor, there's like an executive managing editor, there's an executive, so there's like, there's like six of those. And then with, under them, there are like regular notes editors, regular managing editors. So there's a lot, the ad board is fairly large because I think there are only maybe like between seven and 10 senior editors, which means you don't really, you just kind of hang out. And then the rest of those people are on ad board or are in a pointed position. So it's like, it's very much interactive and very much involved in the sense that like, like everyone has a part in the work that you're doing um, because there, it's just that that's the nature of the beast. It's like there are 45 people and every single one of those people is doing something. All right, you have any more questions? I don't think so. Anything else you want to talk about with your experience? What do people have to know? What do you feel like you haven't gotten yeah. off your chest about your law review experience? I think you can't go, I would just say this, I don't think you can go wrong with applying for law review. Um, I think if you have the time, if you, you should definitely take your time to do it. You should definitely take it seriously. Um, and if you don't get it, you don't get it. There are people who, not everyone at the firm I'm working at is on Law Review, which means like, one could say that Law Review didn't give me that firm job. But for me, it's like, if I don't have like the best grade, then Law Review may be like the extra oomph that I need. So I'm just saying like, don't take yourself too seriously. And if you don't get on, I don't think it's like a big deal. Like it's, 
gonna be fine. Like being on is great and you reap some benefits, but not being on is also great. Um, like I have friends who aren't on law review who have probably done more in the legal profession than I have, like arguing in front of district courts and writing briefs on behalf of like prisoners from the mass incarceration clinic. Like I haven't done any of that, but we're all sort of shining in our own different ways. And so this just happens to be the one of the ways that I'm doing it, but there's so many different ways to do that. So like if you don't get on, it's fine, but don't not apply because why not? It's gonna take you a couple days, might be rough, but you'll get over it and then you can enjoy summer because everybody loves summer. <laughs> you can count it as part one L. Yeah, yeah that's just, just finish it. It's just extension of one L. If you think about it like that, then you'll finish. If you think that once I'm done my last final in <laughs> summer and this is like summer school, then it's gonna be hard to do. You can still do it because that's what I did. I went home, I chilled, but um, and then I kind of come back, go to the library, yes. get it done. But um, I, it's, it's just just do it, just do it, and then and then see what happens. All right. Well, there it is. Thanks, Frank. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, that was so informative. Me. I agree. Now you all can stop asking us about law review. Or <laughs> ask them. Are you going to be checking the comments? I'll know. check the comments. I'll okay, there it is. I put you, I'm like, yeah, he going to check the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll check the comments. Hopefully you don't. I hope I answered enough. So that enough. But I have questions. Questions. All right, y'all. So if you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, and share, and watch out for more videos. Peace. All right. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. That was so good. Yeah.